today we are going to talk about the topic of production of electromagnetic waves as the name it is indicating it is consisting of both electric as well as magnetic components now the question is how this is going to produce if we are taking a stationary charge or a steady current these two are never going to produce the electromagnetic waves experimentally it is seen that only the charges that are changing with time are going to produce the electromagnetic waves so what is the key point here what is the fundamental uh, phenomena behind the production of the electromagnetic waves is the acceleration of the charge particles so let us see how this accelerating charge particles are going to produce the electromagnetic waves so our today's topic is production of electromagnetic waves by an antenna uh, antenna is a piece of conductor uh, you can see in my description box where i have given the detail of antennas the receiving type of antenna transmitting type of antenna and it is a conducting length how it is working so that can be seen in my previous uh, lecture here we are taking antenna for producing the electromagnetic waves and based on our discussion the fundamental mechanism responsible for the radiation of electromagnetic radiation is the acceleration of the charged particles now let us see with the antenna a piece of conductor let this one piece of conductor is given positive charge and another piece of conductor is having negative charge on it these two pieces of conductors are joined with the oscillating wave producing generator these two are the piece of conductor with positive charge this is the piece of conductor with negative charge and both of these pieces are connected to the generator that is providing sinusoidal waves now as the generator is switched on there will be the oscillation of the charges between these two rods and at different time period how they are responding that we are going to see now now consider the production of electromagnetic waves by half wave antenna here the two conducting rods are connecting to the source of alternating voltage we can consider as an uh, lc oscillator for the same here the length of these rods are such that they are equal to 1 by 4 the wavelength of the waves that are going to be emitted if we are introducing say f is the frequency of the oscillator 
this in detail already i have discussed in the size of antenna in the description box their link is shared for the same for the details for selection of the wavelength and uh, the size of the antenna how they are related for the efficient receiving of the waves now the oscillator forces the charges this oscillator will make the charges to oscillate between these two rods so we will consider the time period from t equal to 0 to uh, full uh, one time period that is t now in the first figure we are considering the t equal to 0 at the uh, initial position the upper field is having the positive charge it is at maximum and the lower field is having equal negative charge on it at this moment the direction of the electric field can be seen it is from positive to negative now as the time is increased the charges will decrease from the rods and there will be the charges on the rods momentarily they will be at zero the field will be zero for the same we can see the variation in the electric field in this diagram now at the next half the generator will change the signs as it is going to change in the next half this rod as negative charge and equally this will be charged with the positive one now in this case the direction of electric field will be shown upwards and this is how there will be the oscillation of the waves between these two rods and alternating charges will be there on the rods now at t uh, the full uh, time period the charges oscillate between these two rods and the electric field moves away from this setup at the speed of light so this is how you are having the waveform so this is the electric field how it is going to change along with the oscillation of these uh, charges within two rods have been shown along with this magnetic field is also being produced that is perpendicular to the plane of the uh, board that we are observing so every time with electric field magnetic field is also associated when the charges are being accelerated and this is how the charges are accelerating with the help of this lc oscillator within this setup one cycle of charge oscillation produce one wavelength in electric field pattern so this is also an important conclusion about the production of the electromagnetic waves with the help of the half wave antenna so the half wave antenna's production of electromagnetic waves along with the possible field lines are being shown in this uh, diagram here uh, B is uh, for the magnetic field produced, E is the electric field and S is the pointing vector, I is the current. So, uh, the, if we first take the magnetic field, the magnetic field lines are shown by the concentric circles and every time this magnetic field lies in perpendicular direction to the electric field. If we take this point b out and this is markers cap is the suppose arrow it is showing the direction so b out will be this direction it is perpendicular to the electric field and to the pointing vector s so this magnetic field is in the direction outside the board and in perpendicular to electric field as well as to the pointing vector here b in is the magnetic field this is towards this board or it is inside so this is how the direction of the magnetic field is being in half wave antenna the next important thing is the electric field lines that are formed here they are resembling the dipole fields because of this reason this half wave antennas are also called dipole antennas S that is the pointing vector it indicates the 
amount of energy of electromagnetic radiations produced. Since they are in outward direction, it shows the energy is radiating out in outward direction. And these fields are of dipole fields. That is why it falls off gradually in the radial direction as reciprocal of the uh, distance cube. It falls off 1 by r cube as these are the fields of dipole. So, this is how the half wave antenna is going to produce the electromagnetic radiations and the direction of the respective electric magnetic field as well as the pointing vector is shown through this diagram. Now, the next we are considering connecting the uh, metal rods with a battery. Here, this is a battery. These are the terminals positive and negative. S is the switch and these are the metal rods. One of the metal rod is connected to the negative of the battery and another is connected to the positive of the battery but the switch is open at this moment. When the switch is open there is no connection. The current won't be passing through the circuit and in this case electric field E that is also 0 and magnetic field B is also 0. In the next step when the switch is closed a uh, current starts to begin from positive towards the negative. Now as the switch is closed uh, th these uh, rods are being started to the charging and while charging the current is changing with the time it is increasing so here the rods generate both electric and magnetic field we knew about this thing that only the current that is changing with time is going to introduce magnetic field along with the electric field so this is what has produced here these concentric circles are showing the magnetic field and in this uh, lines these lines are for the electric field they are from the positive rod towards the negative one now when the in the c part we can see when the rods are completely charged fully charged they have gone to their maximum value in that case further current is not flowing in the circuit and in that electric field will be from positive towards the negative rod and magnetic field won't be there because there is no change in the current. So this is what happens in the uh, C part. In this figure we can see the electric lines of forces. These are the electric lines of forces that are produced by the dipole antenna. Here the antenna is placed. This is the antenna axis and these are the electric fields radiated outwards. So we uh, conclude important information from here. First thing is this, these electric field lines, they are propagating away and they are moving with the velocity of light. The next thing is the intensity and power radiated. It is maximum when the it is lying in the plane perpendicular to the antenna axis. And this power or the intensity, it is zero if they are lying along the antenna axis. This thing can be clear from the figure also. And these are the conclusion. The intensity and power radiated are maximum in plane perpendicular to antenna and passing through the midpoint. Power radiated is zero along the antenna axis. Now we are having the mathematical solution to Maxwell's equation that he has given for the dipole antennas. According to the Maxwell, uh, whatever the radiations uh, are being produced by the dipole antenna, its intensity is going to vary according to the relation sin square theta by r square. Here this angle theta, it is being measured from the axis of antenna. Here we are having the sketch for the same. Uh, these are the uh, rods of antenna that are connecting to the alternating uh, voltage supply. Uh, maybe it may be an LC oscillator. And this is the axis of the antenna. From here the angle is being measured. So 
the sketch is giving the idea of the radiations that are produced by the oscillating electric dipole antenna. Uh, we conclude two important things here. The electromagnetic waves, they can induce current in the receiving antenna on the other side. And second important thing is dipole receiving antenna at the position will be giving the intensity maximum when antenna axis, this is our antenna axis, if it is parallel to the electric field. And this will be zero when the antenna axis is perpendicular to the electric field. So, this is all about the uh, production of the electromagnetic waves that is being done by the help of an antenna. So, uh, we complete the today's topic.